You can also assign the crossfade to affect all channels or pen and tilt channels only. To do this, press and hold the program button to enter program mode. Next, press and hold down the mode button. Simultaneously, press the tap display button. All has come on in our display. This means that the fade time setting is currently set to affect all channels. If we want it to affect the joystick or pan and tilt channels only, we would press the mode button followed by tap display until we get our desired setting. You can set between all and only. Only means that the fade times will affect the pan and tilt channels only. Exit. Press the program button for two seconds. Enter MIDI channel for external operation in an automated installation. Press and hold the MIDI record button for two seconds so that your display reads in followed by the current active MIDI channel. To change the MIDI channel settings, use the bank down and up buttons. You can adjust this setting between 1 and 16. To store the MIDI channel, press and hold the MIDI record button for 2 seconds. All LEDs will flash confirming that your MIDI channel has been stored. To manually control your lights, press the blackout button if the indicator next to the blackout is flashing. This takes it out of blackout mode. Then select the fixture buttons for the fixtures that you wish to control. You can then use the faders and joystick to control the channels for your selected fixtures. While the top LED is lit, we can control channels 1 through 8 with the faders. Pressing the channel bank button, illuminates the lower LED which activates channels 9 through 16. Using the faders at this point, we'll control channels 9 through 16. My shutter and dimmer are on channels 15 and 16, so raising those faders opens the shutter and dimmer. At any point, I can use the joystick to control my beam. My gobo channel is on channel 11, so as I raise channel 11 fader, I can go through various gobos of my lights. My gobo rotation channel is on channel 12, so as I raise it, I can index and then get a continuous rotation as I get closer to the top. I'll press the channel bank button once again to get to my color channel so I can put a color on top of my gobo. Channel 7 is my color channel. As I adjust it, you now see a color overhang on top of the gobo. I can select and deselect fixtures at any time during this process as desired. I'll deselect fixtures 1 and 2. As I adjust the beam using the joystick, you'll notice that only the selected fixtures are being manipulated. Any adjustments done with the faders at this point will only affect those fixtures as well. Program scenes, press and hold the program button for two seconds to enter program mode. A small indicator next to the program text will come on. Next, select the fixtures that you want included into your first scene. I'll select fixtures 2 and 4 
so that fixtures 1 and 3 are the only ones selected. I can then use my channel faders to control the various channels of my lights. I've opened my shutter and dimmer with channels 15 and 16. I can then press the channel bank. I can then adjust my fixtures by adjusting faders 1 and 2 or using the joystick. My channel 7 will control the color channel. Pressing the channel bank button one time gets me to channel banks 9 through 16, which will then allow me to control my gobos, which are on channel 11. To store this as a scene, we want to select the scene bank that we want to store our scene to. Use the up and down arrow buttons to select from the three scene banks. We currently have scene bank 1 activated. To store this on scene bank 1, I'm going to press MIDI record button followed by scene button 1. All LEDs will momentarily flash, confirming that the scene has been stored. And then move our lights and adjust the beam position. Use the channel faders to adjust our go both in colors if desired. I'll press the channel bank to activate bank 1 through 8 and change the color. I'll then repeat the process of pressing the MIDI record button simultaneously selecting one of the scene buttons. I'll save this one to button number 2. Once again, all LEDs will flash confirming that the scene was stored. I'll then select fixtures 2 and 4 and select fixtures 1 and 3. I'll activate channel bank 9 through 16 and open my shutter and dimmer for those fixtures. I'll let it be positioned with the joystick. Select Gobo and add rotation to it. I'll store this as a scene by repeating that same process of pressing the MIDI record button followed by the scene button where I want to store it to. I'll select scene button 3. You can always go back and select the scenes at any point during the record process. I'll program one more scene which will include all four lights, adjust their position using the joystick, I'll select a gobo, and store this as a scene by pressing the MIDI record button followed by scene button 4 simultaneously. All LEDs flash confirming that that last scene was stored. I can exit the record scene mode by pressing and holding the program button for 2 seconds. Now that we've recorded some scenes, I actually went ahead and recorded an additional 4 scenes on scene buttons 5 through 8 to fill up the bank. To play back those scenes, press the up and down bank buttons and select the bank that contains the scenes that you've stored. I stored my scene bank 1, so I've set it to 1. Next, press the blackout button so that the indicator LED stops flashing. This takes the controller out of blackout mode. Scene 1 is immediately activated as it was the last one selected. Pressing any of the scene buttons will give you manual control of the scene being played back.
These are the additional scenes that I programmed. These are the scenes that we programmed a little earlier. We can automatically sequence scenes that are programmed into one bank. It'll sequence the scenes from 1 through 8 in order. To do this, press the Auto Delete button. We can then use the Speed Fader to set a hold time for each scene. I set my scenes to hold for 2.6 seconds. This tells us which scene is currently being played back. As you can see, it goes from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 in order. We can also add a fade time to those scenes by adjusting the fade time fader. This will cause smoother transitions between each scene being played back. Speed and fade time adjustments can be made on the fly at any time. You can also press the tap display button to get a tap sync action. This will make the scenes chase to tempo at which I tapped the button to. To deactivate the tap sync, adjust the speed fader to a new setting. You can stop this sequence at any time by pressing the auto button. can then trigger the scenes manually once again. Press the blackout button to bring all values to zero. Now that we've recorded some scenes, we can convert those scenes into a chase. To do so, press the program button for two seconds so you enter program mode, as indicated by the small flashing indicator light. Next, select the chase button where you want to store your scenes to. I selected chase button number one. Next, use the down and up buttons to select the bank that contains the scenes that you wish to start your chase. I've programmed my scenes into bank one and I programmed some into bank two. I'll select scene four from bank one to start my chase and enter that by pressing the MIDI record button. Next I'll select scene 6 from bank 1 and press the MIDI record button to enter it.